shadows, the absence of light, probably one of the most difficult things to deal with in landscape and nature photography. Today I'm going to give you some tips on how to deal with difficult shadows. In order to understand shadows, you have to understand a little bit about how the digital process works. We're going to start with a black and white image here. It's the, These are the same basic principles for both, but I'm just using this as an example because it's a little bit easier to see and understand. So with uh, working in uh, JPEG, you create an 8-bit image. That gives you 256 tonal values. If you shoot in camera raw, you are shooting in 14-bit. That gives you 16,384 tonal values. Same for color or black and white. This is the histogram for this uh, image that's behind that. Let's take a look at how those tonal values are spread around because it's not equal. You start out in the brightest areas. You have half of the tonal values of each. You go to the mid-tone highlights and you have half that, 64 and 4,000. You go to the mid-tones, you've got 32 tonal values and 2,000 in the 14-bit. You go to the shadow mid-tones, you've got 16 tonal values and about 1,000. You go to the shadows, you have 8 tonal values in 8-bit color or black and white. 14-bit, you have 512. And again, these are pixels. They are important, but so are tonal values. Tonal values are almost equally important in the quality of the image. When you capture in camera raw, you are getting the most number of tonal values that you can. Photoshop converts that to 16-bit, by the way. It's not a true 16-bit because you can't increase the number of tonal values, but your camera captures in 14-bit. If you reproduce, if you go to print, you're printing in 8-bit. And that's why frequently you might get really frustrated with your shadows in a, in a print when you go out to print for the print process because the print process has much less. It's, there's a great fall off between. But let's look at some different examples of how we handle shadows, how handle the shadows are reproduced for images. Here we have a stark silhouette, strong, dark shadow. Here I've opened those silhouettes up so that you see detail in the uh, front of these elk. Here the shadow has isolated the subject and added some visual interest. Many times in color, your shadows are going to go blue. They're going to do a color shift. Here's the nice play of shadows off the subject for a landscape. Here's another dramatic use of, of shadow. Notice how the shadow does two things here. One, it sort of uh, balances the dark sky, the dark cloud in the sky, but it also gives the sense of depth and space in this image. By shadowing the foreground, your eye is pulled further back into that image. Same with this one. We've got shadows at play in the foreground and in the background, so your eye was pulled in. It, these are shapes which it reads, but it also wants to play off the highlights. Here, shadow is creating a very strong directional sense of the light. It gives it a sense of motion and movement between the ca eye cast this way and the light and the strong shadows coming this way. It's a very dynamic photograph. Here we've opened the shadows up. They're very light and very bright. I would say that if I have a style, it tends more towards this. I tend to be the kind of photographer that's opening my shadows up a lot. Here's a real light, airy shot. The shadows are very light because the, the light is very atmospheric and enveloping. With this one, instead of silhouetting this tree in the foreground, I've opened up these shadow areas to give the eye a place to play around. It gives a emphasis to the near-far effect that's in this photograph and emphasizes that. Here's another one with the shadows really light. This is a very atmospheric shot, so I wanted the shadows to be real light. You can even see way back into this little shrine that's here. On this image, I darkened the, the edges and made the shadows really deep on the sides so that your sense of view would go up this bright area to the uh, brightly lit cathedral in the background. Here's a real common uh, uh, 
landscape that I do. Notice how the shadows are nice and open and airy. It gives your eye an area to play and rest here. It also wants to pull back in. This is the way the image was shot. Let's take a look at what I do for the post process on this image. And I will just open it in, I, I work with Camera Raw. Uh, and the same uh, tools can be used in Lightroom. They're just, they may look a little bit different. So I'm in the basic area right here, and uh, I'm concentrating on how we handle the shadow areas. And we do that with these uh, sliders right here in the basic uh, mode, in the basic area for adjustment. Exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. So overall, my exposure looks real good. Here's my exposure with the histogram up here. It looks pretty good. So I'm not going to mess with the exposure much. One of the common things that most beginners get wrong is they confuse contrast with dynamic range. Shadows are frequently the function of a dynamic range issue, not necessarily contrast. Most scenic images actually will gain, look better with a little boost in contrast. Even though my shadows are dark right here, I'm going to increase the, the contrast just a little bit with this image. I'm then going to take my highlights and bring those way down. I'm going to take my shadows and open those way up. And the highlights and the shadow sliders are what control the dynamic range aspect. Of it. And look how the shadows opened right up. And the image still looks pretty good. Now, because I open the shadows up, when you open them up with a shadow slider, frequently they kind of get a chalky or fake look. So I come back with some blacks and bring some blacks back in. That's because the shadow slider affects the highlight or the shadow midtone, the blacks affects just the shadow area. So by opening up the, the shadow midtone area with the shadow slider, it opens up the shadows just a little bit too because it bleeds over into that. So I've got to take some blacks and put some blacks back in. Black is Adding black is a negative number. So I'm going to put a little bit of black in there. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to call that done. And that's how we end up with nice open shadows that give us some content. Hope these tips have helped.